Great chicken curry. Fast. It sounds like an oxymoron, but yes, it's totally possible to make it in 32 minutes with a little help from some technology and a couple simple tricks. Let me show you how. This is the great time suck of Indian cooking. Don't get me wrong, onions are important, but they take time to chop and brown, so if we want to make curries fast, this is where we need to start. Coarsely chop about two and a half cups of plain yellow onions. We're saving time already. Coarsely chopping is way faster than mincing. Transfer the onions to a microwave-safe dish, cover with cling wrap, punch a few holes, then zap for 10 minutes at 70% power. 29 minutes to go. Instructions on how to apply 70% power are found in your manual. I had to look it up too. While your onions are cooking without the benefit of your supervision, consider yourself free to do your prep. You'll need one teaspoon of curry powder, one teaspoon of cashmere chili powder for flavor, color, and a little heat, one teaspoon of cumin powder, and one teaspoon of turmeric. This is fenugreek leaf or kasuri methi. If you've never used fenugreek leaf, it adds a ton of flavor to Indian curries. Seriously, it's a game changer. All that's left is one teaspoon of kosher salt. I get jwala green chilies from my Indian grocer, but jalapenos will also work. Cut up two or three green chilies in a rough chop. This dish is about little bursts of green chili flavor. You want to avoid the pervasive green chili everywhere effect. It's a subtle difference, but it's important. For similar reasons, keep the tomato pieces fairly large, but finely mince a couple tablespoons of cilantro. Cilantro everywhere is okay. We're 13 minutes in. Here's a bonus trick. Indian restaurants use blenders to get those crazy silky smooth gravies. This is onion trick number one. Toss the onions into a blender along with a cup of water and a couple tablespoons of neutral vegetable oil. Then blend everything until it's nice and smooth. 15 minutes left to make great chicken curry. Pick a pan that has a lid. You'll see why that's important shortly. Preheat that pan over medium heat and add four tablespoons of neutral oil. When you see the oil start to shimmer, toss in a two inch piece of cinnamon bark and four whole cardamom seeds. Cook that for about 30 seconds, then add two tablespoons of garlic ginger paste. This step can be messy, so stand back. Keep cooking until that stops spattering, turn the heat down to medium low, and then add the powdered spices all at once. This is bonus trick number two. Blooming spices is a fundamental technique when you're cooking Indian, and it's one you absolutely need to learn. There's a little bit of culinary magic going on in this pan. Spices contain oil-soluble flavor compounds, and this is how you get those flavor compounds out of the spices, into the oil, and then into your mouth where they belong. After about a minute, or if you think things are going sideways before that, add 5 tablespoons of passata. I say that because passata cools things down in a hurry. It's a get-out-of-jail-free card, or at least a get-out-of-a-jam-fast card. Give that a good stir and cook for about a minute. Frying the onion paste is trick number two. Add half the onion puree, turn the heat up to medium-high, and stir like nobody is watching until the oil disappears into the sauce, then fry for about a minute. The truly observant amongst you will have noted that I left the onion puree in the blender. Saves time, and really, who likes doing dishes they don't have to anyway? After about a minute or so, you should see the oil starting to separate out. That's the signal to add the rest of the onion puree. In case your survival instincts have not yet kicked in, you probably want to cover your pan at this point. It can get pretty messy otherwise. Keep cooking the onion mixture for around 3 minutes, stirring every minute or so. Then turn the heat down to minimize collateral stovetop damage and add 1 and 1 quarter pounds or 550 grams of chicken thighs cut into large bite-sized pieces. 7 minutes to go. Bring your gravy to a lively simmer, cover, and cook for about 5 minutes and then check the internal temperature of the chicken. You're going for a target of 175 degrees Fahrenheit or 80 degrees Celsius. When you hit that number, the chicken is done. You can seed the green chilies if you want less heat, but I just chuck them in seeds, membrane, and all. Add a good handful of cilantro and the tomatoes. Give everything a good stir to combine, simmer for about a minute, and then taste and adjust salt if needed. That took me 32 minutes, but the prize is restaurant-worthy chicken curry even if it takes you 40 minutes. And that means you can make awesome Indian any night of the week. There are other ways to cook onions. If you really want to dig in and make curries like they do in the best Indian restaurants, check out this video. Fair warning though, you'll be going down a rabbit hole if you do.